Hello friends and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz with Sassy's LLC and I am back with another emergency card kit. If you're new to my channel, an emergency card is one where we make the cards ahead of time, but we leave the sentiments off. That way, when an occasion arises, we can choose the design that best fits the recipient and the sentiment that best fits the occasion. To help you with this, I release a free printable kit on the first and third Friday of every month full of sentiments and card sketches that use sentiments in these sizes. Let's take a look at the kit. In kit 37, we have sympathy sentiments. You are in our thoughts and prayers. May your heart and soul find peace and comfort. Wishing you strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Sharing in your sorrow. Something that is loved is never lost. Toni Morrison, sorry for your loss. In our waiting, God is working. Wishing you comfort. With deepest sympathy, sending caring thoughts. I'm so sorry. Grief comes in waves, lending you strength at high tide. Praying for you at this difficult time. This something legit sucks. Big hugs. And I know that some of you are like really not going to want that one. So you can just cut it right off the bottom corner. I made it really easy to remove. Um, but this has been, um, this has been a tough year for me. I've lost more people this year than I have in a really long time. And for me, for my friends and some of my family, that sort of break in the tension is really important. And it just lets us breathe a little. So I hope that it is helpful for some of you as well. On this first page, these are circle sentiments that are one and three quarters of an inch. And then there's a printed circle that's just a little bit bigger. So if you use a die or a punch and you wiggle it until you can't see that circle anymore, you know it'll fit perfectly. On the second page, we have the same sentiments in the same sizes, but without that circle. So you could use a different shape or a different size circle. Um, and that works really well. It also works great if you're gonna shrink these down and print like two per page. We've done that in a couple of videos. And so this is the page I use the most for that. Then we have rectangle sentiments and these are the same sentiments. I've adjusted fonts and things a little bit. Um, and then two of them are doubled up. For our strip sentiments, I've gone back to the original scripty font. I just feel like you can read that one a little bit better. The other one, I like the font better, but it gets a little small on a quarter inch strip. So we'll see. We'll try and find a way to use that one differently. Um, we have the same sentiments and then huge hugs, my friend, and I'm here for you that are additions on here. And those come in four different fonts. As always, emergency kits are completely free for subscribers and come with tons of inspiration. Once you click that button, if you ring the bell, you'll be notified every time there's a new free kit. So far in June, we have done beach and summer fun. We had a whole kit full of birthday sentiments and sub sentiments. Just an update, I asked if there were other sentiments there that you wanted to see as insides. I promised to add those and then I had to travel all of a sudden. I'm a little behind on that, but that will be coming. Um, then we're on the sympathy kit and you guys, normally next Friday on the 28th, I would be doing a stepped up version of these cards, but there's a surprise release instead. I know, uh, and a big sort of hint about what that surprise release might be at the end of this video, so stay tuned. In July, we'll do Christmas in July, wedding and anniversary, and maybe a third kit, maybe a favorites kit. But I could use your help with August. These are the most requested options so far, and I've got to narrow it down to like two. I've got sports ball sentiments, cooking and baking, military and veteran sentiments for coworkers or coworkers and friends, encouragement. Um, I've got a lot of requests for another kit that would fit with Cards for Cubs um, and get well. So let me know in the comments below which of those you want to see most. If you have particular wording or ideas, I would love that too. I love anything punny and fun um, for get well. Uh, I would love to know like what kinds of get well cards you send. And that helps me kind of uh, fill in sentiments for that kit. All right, enough chit chat. Let's get to the cards. So I have three pieces of cardstock here. I'm already not really following the sketch. So the dark gray layer is four and a quarter by five and a half. Mine's in black. The gold is four and an eighth by five and three quarter. And then I have a piece of pattern paper 
that is four by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna start by adding that black layer to my card base, mine is top folding, but it doesn't really matter. I really wanted to use that pattern paper. It's from Paper Rose Studio, and I just think it's sort of elegant and subtle, but I had already cut it down to four by five and a quarter. So that's why there's an extra layer on mine, but you could skip that, right? You could do pattern paper where I have my gold layer. I tried to keep the same margin throughout the card, right? So it's an eighth of an inch difference in the cut, which gives me this sixteenth of an inch margin and it's so gorgeous like i love 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 that but if you aren't up for that then just cut things at a quarter inch right four and a quarter by five and a half and four by five and a half like you would be skipping that gold layer that will work too so i'm just layering all of these on with some wet glue if you haven't used paper rose studio pattern paper before it's slightly glossy and i like that for this too because we're making a sympathy card right I want something that is sort of understated and elegant. Um, so this is my attempt at that. I ran this piece of shimmer white card stock through a 3D embossing folder. And now afterwards, I am cutting it down to this medium gray layer that's four and a quarter by two and three eighths. It's a really organic emboss. And so I find that it shrinks up in weird ways. And even if the edges were straight before I embossed it, they're never straight afterwards. So I like to emboss first and then cut. This particular folder is a favorite. It's from Spellbinders and I'm going to mispronounce it. It's the efflorescent flora. I think that's it. I'm looking right out at you guys and I always say it wrong. But um, I decided to create an ombre on here and I started with Delicata gold shimmer ink. And then this is my black blending brush that has probably some dye ink and probably some pigment ink. And I just added a little depth of color down at the bottom because the gold wasn't quite as bold as I wanted it to be. So I am going to go ahead and glue these two pieces together. This is the medium gray layer and then the purple layer. And again, I'm getting that 16th of an inch border all the way around. I don't always ink blend and do these sorts of things in the intro video, but because we don't necessarily have a stepped up video for this one, I went, we're, we're going just a little extra. But again, you could use pattern paper instead of the embossed panel, right? All the way through, remember, you can always keep it super simple. My black rectangle here is the pink layer on the card sketch that's two by two and a half. And from there, I can pick my sentiment style. So the circle I have is one and seven eighths, but it could be two inches. But if I want a rectangle sentiment, my mat's one and a half by two and a half, and I would just turn the whole thing sideways. On this particular card, I actually kind of liked it sideways, but I already had a plan in my head. So we're gonna go ahead and glue down my large rectangle that I've cut out of some glossy black cardstock. Again, the pattern paper is a little bit glossy, and so I liked this subtle shine on there as well. And then again, my circle here in gold is slightly smaller than two inches. The two inch circle completely fills the width of that pink or glossy black rectangle. But I just like how it creates that little bit of a border that we have everywhere else too. So I'm using Sharing in Your Sorrow and I'm using my one and three quarter inch circle punch. I find it super simple here and I'll use removable adhesive to add this onto my card. That way, if I change my mind and want a different sentiment later, I can certainly do that. This wouldn't have to be a sympathy card, but I love how elegant that is. For card number two, you guys, I hot foiled. <laughs> I don't do it very often, but this is the Glimmering Peonies Hot Foil Plate from Spellbinders. And then there's a stencil set that goes with it that has six layers of stencils. I honestly wish there were fewer stencils because I'm not doing different colors. I don't need everything so separated, but it's gonna be fine. I am just coming in at the base of each petal, each leaf, and adding some dark teal ink in the same sort of hue as my teal cardstock and coming in and creating a tone on tone look. My foil is also kind of subtle. It's a matte silver and I really, really love that. So I'm using a combination of my medium blending tools from Altenew 
and then my very small blending tools from Spellbinders to come in on some of those small areas. I'm really just gonna give you the highlight reel, like the end of each stencil and then the reveal because that's the fun part. But you could use pattern paper here. Whatever your favorite paper is that you've been hoarding because you're like, I don't wanna cut that or I don't wanna cover it up. This is a great card for that because I'm gonna pare back our sketch a little bit and really let this pattern shine. This is also a really great option if you are gonna stencil or hot foil or whatever you're doing here. Um, to mass produce because all of the stencils have the same color, right? And so it would be really easy to hot foil three or four panels and then just lay the stencil down over and over again um, and just kind of watch a movie or something and do a little ink blending. But look how pretty that is. It's not complicated and it packs a huge punch. So this is Master Layouts 2 from Gina K Designs. And originally my sketch had a slightly wider rectangle, but I was looking for a die that would be close to what I had in the sketch. And this die set, I kind of forgot that I had. So I adjusted the sketch to use the same size that these two rectangle dies have. I am placing the smaller one that has a stitched detail in the very center of my panel. And then I'm taping it down carefully only on places where I don't have foil. It might be okay with tape over the foil, but I'm not risking it, right? I'm not starting over. And then this is the slightly larger rectangle. And so what I'm doing is preserving the pattern in the background and in the foreground. I thought for a moment about also using the larger pair of rectangles with the stitching, uh, but it was gonna cut away too much of it and I wanted to preserve the sketch as close as I could since this is video one. You don't need master layouts to do this, right? If you have an A7 rectangle die set, you can get pretty close or use a different shape, right? This is just a method. And I'm always looking for ways to preserve my favorite things, right? To show off the best of what my paper can do or what my hot foiling was or my stenciling, right? But then to also have it not look like I just glued one piece of cardstock onto a card. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I don't know, I like to get a little fancy. So at this point, I'm really following the card sketch. I have an A2 matte silver layer, and then I have my stenciled layer that is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. I just cut the center out of it. And then I have my medium gray and purple layers that also follow the sketch. There's a little banner, like a stitched banner that comes in that same master layouts die set. And I thought about using that with one of our strip sentiments, but in the end, I'm gonna use one of the rectangle sentiments. I really like how some of the font pairings ended up on the rectangles. And so I just had it in my head that that's really what I wanted to do. I glued this down flat, but certainly you could pop it up with some foam. I just figured, um, if I am using this for a funeral or something like that, a lot of times there's lots of cards and so that bulk can, I don't know, get kind of in the way of things. I wasn't quite sure where I wanted this. I cut this down ever so slightly smaller than normal. So instead of one and a half by two and a half, it's a one and three eighths by two and three eighths. If you do that, it is the same width as that medium gray layer. Um, and you could put it right down at the bottom there, but instead I'm gonna end up with it kind of over on the side. To cut my rectangle sentiments, I stick this in my trimmer and I slide my trimmer blade up connecting the tick marks from top to bottom, but I don't go all the way through the top. I want to keep everything connected because I need to rotate and cut again. So I'll just go through, through all four layers of the tick marks and then I have these flaps. That's what you want. There are tick marks on the side as well, so I will just rotate and then connect them on the blade of my trimmer. I like this Fiskars trimmer because there's a wire guide and I can see when it lines up perfectly over the top of those tick marks and I know I'm gonna get the cut that I want every time. And then these are perfectly one and a quarter by two and a quarter inches. Because I cut my silver mat a little smaller than what it has on the sketch, I'm gonna get that same 16th of an inch border I have at the very edge of my card and then in the middle rectangles. And I'm not really following the sketch at this point, right? I did the big layers, but then I left off that pink rectangle because I think this card is beautiful and looks finished 
even without that. I hope you do too. All right, my friends, those are our two cards for today. I would love to know which of these two is your favorite. If you are interested in this free printable kit, all I ask is that you subscribe to my channel. And if you ring that bell, you'll be notified every time there's a new free download. I promised you a hint about the surprise release next Friday, June 28th, that same day. I will be the guest crafter on Craft Roulette. It is the ultimate paper crafting card making game show challenge and it's amazing. 6.30 p.m. Central, 4.30 Pacific time. I'll leave a link in the description box below and it has a notify me that will remind you when it's coming up. In the description box below, you'll find links to all of the supplies I've used along with the emergency card kit playlist where you can find 36 other free downloads that are just waiting for you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will see you next time.